If you messing with my flow, you ain't a friend of me. We be chasing that, chasing that energy. Forget the haters, forget my enemies. We be chasing that, chasing that energy. If you messing with my flow, you ain't a friend to me. We be chasing that, chasing that energy. Forget the haters, forget my enemies. We be chasing that, chasing that energy. Hi everyone, it's Alan Craigie here in beautiful Queensland and Manly at the beach on the water. About to do an interview, the first episode, and my first guest today is the big AC from Chase Energy. Hope you enjoy it. People, it's the big AC from Chase Energy. One day in Newcastle, Brisbane the next baby, up here at Manly. Look at this, beautiful water. Up in Queensland, man, we're making things happen up here. Chase Energy, big AC. Big AC, first episode of Real Talk with the OC, baby. Let's go. Let's do this. So, OC, tell me, what is your understanding of mental health? Yeah, look, um, my, my understanding of mental health is mental health is, is everyone's business, yeah? It doesn't matter on what your race, religion, sexuality, or what you believe in, or what's going on in the world. It's mental health is, to my understanding, is something that can creep up on you, that can bite your ass overnight, or, to my understanding, it could be a slow death, you know? When you're battling depression, anxiety, uh, you know, losing someone to death, losing someone to suicide, losing someone that's passed away, a uh, divorce, a marriage, a family breakdown, whatever, you know, and it's common now, especially with COVID-19, uh, you know, the, the rates are higher for people who come out with mental health, but my understanding of mental health is that if you don't address it and uh, activate your life through exercise and have a chat to someone, it can, it's, uh, it's a slow death. Now the big O, have you ever experienced mental health? Look, I've experienced mental health. Um, you know, I've, you know, it's, it's, it's funny you say this, you know, I was speaking to my psychologist the other day and she said, you know, and there's something that I found out talking with is that I, I suffer with this thing with detachment and attachment, you know? So I'm always either really close to people and really affectionate and I like being around people and, and, and mates and friends and stuff like that, you know, and when something happens in my life, I either I run and block it, like if there's a death in the family or I want to go to a funeral or like a, a relationship breakdown and the only thing I know how to do is just run the other way and you know, I've been doing it for for years you know but my mental health is something that's quite public and I'm happy to share it but yeah I've suffered mental health myself for many years. OC, tell me brother have you ever been diagnosed with any mental health? I've been mental diagnosed with mental health yeah so I've been diagnosed with that uh, bipolar and uh, believe it or not um, might sound funny when I say this, but yeah, I played in front of big crowds in rugby league, but I suffered with anxiety too as well when I, you know what I mean, like in big, big crowds, a lot of people. Big O, have you lost anyone to mental health or any family members? Oh, yeah, friends. look, I've lost friends to mental health and suicide, yeah. Um, two years ago in 2019, I lost two, two really good mates to suicide within uh, six weeks of each other. Um, my friend from school, uh, growing up in Tinga in Inverell, um, lived down the road from me, you know, um, I'm not going to say his name, but yeah, he's, you know, he committed suicide uh, in his shed and, um, you know, this issue is, is real, you know, and this is why we, I want to do this episode, you know, real talk with the OC, you know, talk about real, real problems, real issues, real solutions, because it's real people, like we're losing too many people, you know, black, white, whatever it may be to mental health, you know, and, and, and it's something that, you know, it's there, we've got organisations that do things, but, you know, enough of the talk, man got to activate people's lives and change their mindset, yeah? OC, is there any family history of mental health, brother? Yeah, look, it's funny, you know, I had a great life and, and uh, mum and dad raised me, they were very strict and uh, to be quite honest, you know, like I, if, in my direct family, mum and dad and my brothers and sisters, you know, like no mental health, you know, and I'm the oldest of seven kids, but my mental health stems from leaving home when I was 15 to play a professional rugby league career and, you know, that, that's when that attachment, det that detachment come into my life, you know, and you know, and then, you know, years later, they've been diagnosed with bipolar, you know. At what age, I see, did you experience mental health or suicide ideation? Yeah, I think it would have been back in 2001 when I was at the West Tigers. Right. Um, there were times there where I was late to training, I was drinking, I got fined $32,000 in one month by Wayne Pierce. Um, I went for a relationship breakdown. Um, doing things I shouldn't have been doing so and that's when I started seeing a psychologist back then you know so I'm talking back in you know 2000 2001 what caused the mental health back then so things that maybe triggered me 
to um, experience and have mental, mental health in my life was that um, I lost my younger cousin Darcy at uh, 15 to, he had a sore knee and he had a tumour in the knee and he passed away at the age of 15. He was a mad Parramatta supporter and Darcy was my little cousin but we grew up like brothers here yeah, and to bury my cousin at 15 I thought life was fucked. It's yep. unfair, yeah? Yep. I thought life was unfair. Um, and I was actually picking him up from RPA Hospital. Uh, I went and saw him that night. I was picking him up the next day to go and watch Spider-Man 1 because he wanted to watch it. And um, then he had you know, tumours on the size of the brain of 50 cent coins, you know, and um, he died in his sleep that night. And I thought that was very unfair. Then I mean, my nan was the matriarch of the family, you know, and you know, and I love my nan. I miss her every day. And um, she raised all, not only me, but all of, all of our family in Tingy, you know, and um, when she passed away, it knocked me for six years. And, and in the same amount of time, my uh, nephew, um, on the first day he learned to walk at 11 months old, got run over by the next door neighbour and splattered, you know, like my brother had to pick his head up and it was splattered on, you know, and he was dead, you know. And, um, and thank God right now, well, he's 19 now, my nephew, you know, he's alive, but, you know, he's truly blessed and grateful, like he passed away six times. and. I had to go and wait at the hospital when the rescue helicopter landed when I was playing with the West Tigers and just shit like this, man. Like, you know, and the only way I could ease that pain was through fucking drugs and alcohol, you know. And, you know, and I was playing footy, you know, at the train. At the time, I had all things going on in my life. And, you know, growing up in the community that I lived in, an Aboriginal community, like, people experience trauma. I grew up, I lived a life of trauma with family, with drugs and alcohol and suicide, you know. I thought it was normal, man. Yep. Going up in the community, you know, and a lot of the community around Australia now, we don't think it's normal, it's just, it is what it is. I, I never space. reached out. I went that way. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. Gam, drink, and drink. I was doing all that sort of stuff, man, and um, yep. just to ease the pain. You know, people take their own lives because it's not that they don't love life or it's not that they hate life, it's that they can't live with the pain no longer. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like when I was dealing with my own suicide, like I, I was, I'd have, sometimes of a day I'd be struggling to breathe. Yep. My skin had changed colour. I'd have the shakes, I'd break out in sweats, on a different type of meds, and I'm just like, fuck. I don't even feel like I'm connected to the world, to myself. You know? No explanation. It just hits you. It just hits you. You know? And I, I, I tried different meds. I, I spoke to different psychotherapists. I, I tried different counsellors and psychologists and I went to rehab and I've done this, you know, but you know the only thing that saved me, man, was get out there and just running, exercise and chasing energy, you know? And why do you exercise? Yeah, look, I'll run and exercise because it's good for this. It's good for the mind, man. You know, like I'm in Brisbane today, I landed here at 9 o'clock this morning, I come up and see the brothers up there and I'm going to run and exercise today, you know, because I know that if I don't get my fix, you know what I mean? I haven't got it back in me to live the life that I used to live years ago and come back, you know? So I run an exercise because it gets my mind, my body and my spirit and puts it all in line with each other. Yep. You know, and the great news is, you know, with um, Macquarie Hospital and University of New South Wales, we're going to do some research on how important exercising is for mental health and validated research, you know, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I see, tell me this one, why is it so important that Chase Energy needs to be studied with the universities and Macquarie Hospital. Is it to prove the fact that exercise can heal and help support people with mental health? It's not a cure, but you know, it, it's, we're gonna prove that it, it actually works, you know, and but for these young kids today, you know, it's, it's the mindset. We've gotta change the mindset, because at the moment, a lot of kids today are, are locked in house due to COVID and just playing games and Xbox and, you know, what happens to them? They, they eat and they're not sleeping properly. So we have to, you know, develop tools to help these, educate these young kids on how important exercise is for their own well-being. I tell you how important it is, you know, and, and it's real, you know. And they say if you can help one person, you've done your job, yeah. Well, man, taste the energy. I am that one person. It helped change my life, and my, you know, and my purpose today with blokes like with you, Rasso and Ronnie Yap and Dax and Claude, you know, like we can go out there and change the world and change people's lives people we don't even know through chase energy because i am proof i'm alive today you know i talked to my mum and she used to hate the fact someone knocked on the door because she thought she's gonna get the bad news that her son's gone you know and um yeah life's good today because i choose it to be good because i exercise you know and rain hail or shine man like i'll run you know and some days if i'm too sore i'll walk 
I just got to activate my, you know, my mind, my body and soul and, and appreciate the fact that, you know, every day that I wake up, it's a second chance, you know. Yep. Every day that I wake up is a second chance. But chase the energy, you know, to me, you know, is my purpose, my kids and my why. But, you know, when people are watching this, you know what I mean, they, they, you got to realise that if you, if you don't think it in your mind, you never touch it in life. Yep. If you don't think of a better life, if you don't, you know, if you don't dream of, of, of having that car, you don't dream of having a job, you don't dream of having that partner or you don't dream of having a better life, then you're never going to touch it with your hands, you know. But with Chase Energy, we're going to prove that for exercise, it'll activate your life, you know, healthy mind, feed your mind good food. I realise today I'm different. I'm a different character. I'm a different cat. You know, I'm a different person than all my other mates. You know, you know, and I, I use my bipolar to my strengths. You know, and, and hence why we're going to be de developing an app. You know, to help engage and connect people together, customise your own groups. Single fathers, single mums, people with DV, alcohol, drugs. Have your own support network. You know, so that they can engage from their bedroom, the car, the toilet, the lounge room, wherever it may be. And uh, one thing I've learned is this. You know, is Want social change? You can have social media. For social media, we can change the world if we deliver the right message. The beauty about the energy of the world is the energy. You know, wherever the energy goes, we flow. You know, yes. and um, you know, we, we work with hospitals and universities and schools and, yes. and single mums and refuges and kids. And like, we're going to do some amazing things. You know, and my life has changed, and I'm very grateful. I'm uh, blessed for where I'm at today in my life, you know, because there's still some days where I'd scratch my head and go, man, I shouldn't be here today. Yeah. You know, now like, I've got people from uh, Mount Isa, you know, I'm going to go up and see the people from Mount Isa and, and Cairns and, and uh, other communities throughout Queensland, you know, and New South Wales. And look, there's people in New Zealand, there's people in, all over the world that reach out, you know, and because, you know what, go back to the mental health question, mental health is everyone's business. Everyone's business. Yeah. Even if you don't experience it, you're gonna know someone that will yeah. or has, you know? And with Chase Energy, we just wanna be that net so when people fall, we'll catch her, yes. you know? And we'll say, listen, we don't need an army, baby. We are the fucking army. We're here, we all roll together. We ride this way together. Sometimes you fall off, but guess what? We're gonna teach you how to flip the switch in your mind and get back on. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like I said before, we need, you know, we need all the, for people power, we'll have social, social change for social media. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, come and check out the Big AC. we'll have little snippets on my social media, but the full stories are going to be on there. And you know, we've got three or four songs that are produced now for people that are rich songs, you know, and we'll put, we'll upload them as well, you know, but we just want to make this, like, for the day I die, I just want to leave this. Don't worry about Alan Craigie, the football and the premierships and the youngest ever schoolboy. Remember that Alan Craigie changed the world when it came to mental health. There's only one OC, the real OC. It's me, baby, from Newey, from the little T. That's what I'm saying, baby. Chase the energy. Share your story. If you're at home and you think no one's listening to you, no one cares, man, I care. I've got a team of people. I've got an army of people. We need you to become a part of it. Don't think you're alone, you know? Share your story because there's someone out there just like you and me that wants to hear that story to, you know, activate their life for that day. Let's give them something to live for. That's so why we wake up, we show up against all odds, and we chase the motherfucking energy. What I see what you do, OC, is next level. And I'll roll with you, bruh. All the way from Brisbane Manly. Keep chasing energy, OC. Love you, my man. No more chip and chase, chase energy. <laughs>